Hi guys, it's Mrs. Louder here to talk to you about the relationship between fractions and whole numbers. So this would be 13-7 in your packet, which is page 167. All right, so I thought what better way to talk about whole numbers and fractions than using food. So here I have a whole cookie. And I, I can tell it is a whole cookie because nothing is missing from it. Even if I were to break the cookie into three equal pieces, I would still have a whole cookie unless I gave those pieces away. But I know me. I am not satisfied with only one whole cookie. I want more. So now I have four whole cookies. One, two, three, four. Four whole cookies. Okay. If I were to make this a fraction, I could say I have four. over one, four whole cookies, okay? This stands for the four holes and this stands for the fact that they, there is, they are in one piece, okay? I have not broken them up, so they are a whole cookie still, okay? So, how can I relate my cookies into a number line? So let's look at that. Here it is. I have now lined up my four whole cookies, and here is my number line. So right here, like I like to do with all number lines, this would be a zero to start off with. But I can't make this a one like in the past because I don't just have one hole lined up here. I actually have four holes because this is a whole cookie, one, this is a whole cookie, two. This is a whole cookie, three. And this is a whole cookie, four. So I actually have four holes within one line, okay? And what I could do is then break this up. So I'm gonna look at where the cookies split it. So from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. So from the zero to the first tick mark, that is one whole cookie's length. So that is a one. And from here to here, that is the second cookie. So I'm gonna put a two here because that is where the second cookie stops. And from here to here, this is the length of the third cookie. So at this line, I'm gonna put a three because that is where the third cookie stopped. And then from here to here is my fourth cookie. And that is why my end of the number line has a four because that is where the fourth cookie um, stopped, okay? All right, so now these right here are called oops, whole numbers. So these are whole numbers. This is one whole cookie, two whole cookies, three whole cookies, and four whole cookies, whole numbers. So what would happen if I decide to split my cookie up? Hmm. So I still have my one, two, three, four cookies, and I'm gonna go ahead and label it with my holes. So right here, that ended one whole cookie. And right here ended two whole cookies. And right here ended three whole cookies. With it ending with four whole cookies. But what if I actually wanted to take this and I wanted to split it? What if I wanted to break them into thirds? So I'm going to break him into thirds. And I'm going to break him into thirds. Not the 
best, not as equal as I want it to be, but it's hard to write on this. I'm going to break it into thirds. Okay, so now I have my cookies broken into thirds. So that means from zero to one, I actually have three pieces. I have to split from zero to one into thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And just like I would label a number line, I'm going to go ahead and label them into thirds. So that's one third, two thirds, and this would be three thirds. Okay. But now I have another cookie broken into thirds. So my second cookie between the one and the two is also going to need, my line is also going to need to be broken into thirds as well. So here we go. So if I left off at three thirds, which the numerator and the denominator being the same number means it's the whole. So here I go. So if that's three thirds, this would be four thirds. This would be five thirds. And this would be six thirds. And think about it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces at that point, but they've still only been broken into thirds, each cookie. Okay? All right. So again, I broke my third cookie up into thirds. So from two to three. I would break my line up into thirds. So if that's six thirds, this would be seven thirds. This would be eight thirds. And this would be nine thirds. Okay. And again, my fourth cookie's been broken up into thirds. So this would be ten thirds. This would be 11 thirds. And this would be 12 thirds. Because each cookie was broken into three pieces, but there are 12 pieces here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that is why when you get to the fourth cookie, it is 12 thirds. So we can say that four whole cookies is equal to four over one, which is also another way of saying four holes because four cookies that are still whole cookies, but since I broke them now up into thirds, we can say that is also equal to 12 thirds because I broke each cookie up into thirds, that's my denominator, and there were 12 pieces of cookie that got me to the fourth cookie, that was the, that included all the cookies. So 12 thirds. A really fun fact would be, since I broke these cookies into thirds, so whatever the denominator is, when you get to your whole number, you can actually look at it as a division problem. Look at this. When I look at 12 thirds, hmm, 12 divided by 3 is 4. If I were to look at that third cookie, so cookie number three, cookie number three had a nine thirds. Huh, nine divided by three is three. So that's another way you can look at it too. You can actually turn it into a division problem to find your whole number. Okay, so two different ways to look at that. So let's practice without the number line. So what is the whole of eight over one? Remember, 
When you have a fraction that looks like that, you're literally saying its name. This means eight holes. So your whole number is, you are correct, eight. And if we are looking at it as cookies, that would mean I had eight whole cookies. So what about the whole of five over one? Well, remember how we would say this fraction would be five holes. So the whole number is, yes, you got it. Five, you guys are awesome. Okay, and that would literally mean I have five whole cookies. If we're talking about cookies. If we're talking about the number line, then you could say I have five holes within the number line. So let's try this one. What is the whole for this comparison? Hmm, 12 halves is equal to six holes. Well, I've got this really big hint here because we know that when you see a number over one, or I should say the numerator over one as a denominator, then that stands for six holes. So my whole number would be six. If we look at this one, a good way to remember, think division, guys. What's 12 divided by two? You are correct. It is six. Yay! All right. So let's now take the clue away. So remember, the clue was actually having the fraction that represents whole. So let's take the clue away and only use division to help us. You got this. It's not as scary as you think. 15 fifths. Hmm. I'll write it again. 15 fifths. Well, Mrs. Louder told me that I could divide. So what is 15 divided by five? If you said it is three, you are correct. That would also equal to three holes. Let's look at this one. Eight halves. Hmm. So eight halves. Well, I know that I can divide eight by two. So what is that? Eight divided by two. I could skip count by twos until I get to eight. What's that? You got it, guys. It is four. So eight halves is really like four holes. There you go. So now you know the relationship between whole numbers and their fractions. Remember, a whole number is that number that stands alone. So I could have 12 over one. That just means 12 holes. So your answer would be 12, absolutely. And if you have a fraction where you're, it's not as easy as the denominator being a one, and say the denominator is a six, then you know that you can divide 12 divided by six. Think about it. It's two. So that would be 
two holes. Okay? All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye.